After the call on Yahoo Finance starts right now, Brad Smith here alongside Shauna Smith. Earnings call for Starbucks, the brand of the Green Siren. It just ended, and all of the tickers on Yahoo Finance platform are trying to catch up with this one. Two of them did, but ultimately Starbucks right now among the top three trending tickers on the Wi-Fi Interactive. You've got it there on your screen. We're taking a look at shares here. After hours, they are down by about 5.7%. And ultimately, they sputtered a little bit lower here during the call. Really interesting activity that we've been tracking ever since the executives started to speak about what this quarter was and what the future looks like here, Shauna, which is what we're going to get into some of our takeaways with. But just taking a look at that interactive, here's the broader context kind of setting up after this earnings period going forward from here. You had all of the boxes checked. You got a new CEO. You've got them trying to make sure that they're bring, bringing back demand or reengaging with demand in China. And then another thing, what are they doing with all these different Frappuccinos that I can order? I had my, I had my Frappuccino actually during this call, Shauna. You know, I can tell your energy is high. So it's doing its job in Starbucks. That's why people love it. They go back time and time again because it tastes very good. And that's why they have that pricing power. And that has certainly been one of the big drivers of the results that we saw this quarter. We heard some commentary about the consumer, really just more so in regards to the uncertainty and why that is playing a role in the guidance. You mentioned the drop that we're seeing, though, in after hours. A lot of that, though, pertains to the fact that we heard the new CEO, Lakshman, there reiterating the company's full year guidance. I think that just fell short of what the street was looking for, given the fact, Brad, that this was a very strong quarter for the company. There was lots of questions about whether or not Starbucks was going to be able to maintain that momentum that we have seen in recent quarters. We know the stock is up, what, 15% at least since the start of the year. So I think the fact that we didn't see that raise there, that is the big takeaway from this earnings call and pertaining to how the stock is reacting right now. Yeah, you're spot on that with that year-to-date move. And we've got it up here on the Wi-Fi Interactive, up 15.4% year-to-date there. So good call out there. Let's call out as well some of our key takeaways. And, and you started to get into one of them, especially when we think about the guidance here. So first and foremost, we got to think about what the company is doing here. And first and foremost, it was interesting to hear them talking about refounding the company. I mean, let's remember for Starbucks and it being a household name that it already is, a lot of analysts might hear refounding the company and say, you know what, I got to scratch my head on that one a little bit. It did garner one of the questions, actually the first or second question from an analyst, and they had to reiterate, yeah, this is a new mission to set of promises, a contemporary expression of their, their mutual success here. And looking at driving conversations within the company, trying to be more external about human connection. I mean, this was the most that I had heard about a coffee company saying that, hey, we are in the business of uh, of human connections. And so ultimately, I, I of course think about the ways that they're trying to position the company going forward, but I think analysts just want to figure out, okay, what does that mean in terms of investment? If you're refounding the company or reshaping the mission, what does that trickle down to to money that's going out the door, how you're upending perhaps some of that experience? They were defining some of that experience as the front and theater versus, you know, kind of the back of, of what's taking place. I uh, think about, you know, behind the curtain at the Wizard of Oz, if you will. But ultimately, at the end of the day, how much is going into revamping that experience and where might you also have to recreate those customers' experiences that, that the customers might, might not necessarily like as well. And that's going to be key. Do the customers still gravitate to that experience as well? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And I think that this is just an example, one of the first that we have really got of Luckman really putting his name and really redefining the vision of Starbucks now that Howard Schultz is no longer at the helm of the company. We know that obviously Howard Schultz has really shaped the direction of Starbucks. There has been a little bit of tension uh, under uh, within Starbucks stores with some of their employees, the union, exactly how management has dealt with some of that pressure has certainly caused some criticism out there. So maybe this is a chance to reset, re-outline the goals, the mission of the company and get everyone on board. So I did like what Lakshman had to say. He also talked about he needed, to, they want to streamline and also simplify some of their operations are exactly what that means in terms of CapEx. I think the street wants to know a little bit more about, but maybe we'll get another update on that on the next earnings call. I also wanted to point out some of the momentum. This is the second takeaway from what we saw from this uh, earnings uh, call here. Momentum is certainly building, and the company does expect 
to see an improvement here with margins in the second half of the year. That, of course, will be good news here for shareholders, good news here for investors. Obviously, that is a momentum, that is a trend that the street wants to see, although they were a bit cautious in terms of how long potentially that could actually take in order to come to fruition, just in terms of what they were saying. A lot of that uncertainty basically boils down to the consumer, the global picture, not so much here in the U.S., but more so what we're seeing on a global level. And the fact that the recovery could take a little bit more time, specifically in China, is one of those reasons that I think the street's a little apprehensive, at least just in terms of what the next few months could potentially look like for Starbucks and getting that momentum back. Yeah, and you talk about what they were saying with regard to confirming that fiscal year 2023 guidance, but it also comes back to what they weren't saying. And they weren't saying that they were going to return to light teen margin percentages by uh, fiscal year 2024. And so that remains in question. That was one of uh, the other notes that came up from analysts here. And lastly, we've got to talk about more about that China recovery as well, because you flagged this um, and, and gave a little bit of context around that just a moment ago. That China recovery is going to be so important for Starbucks, especially with the new store openings that they've continued to really take into uh, this region in particular here. Yeah, certainly, Brad. And when you take into account what the CFO of Starbucks, Rachel Ruggieri, what she was saying on the call, she was talking about that uncertain macro environment, talking about how that exactly is playing into the growth that they expect to see in the coming quarters, what's underway, what's going to take some time. Let's take a listen to what she had to say about that. When we look out towards the balance of the year, we expect our average weekly sales in China to, in to continue and increase to improve sequentially uh, quarter over quarter, but at a more moderate pace than what we saw in Q2. We've already seen it start to moderate. And that's really driven by the fact that there's still some uncertainty in the overall environment from a recovery standpoint, when you look at things like consumer behavior, as well as recovery in key segments like our international travel. So they don't expect a straight line recovery over in China. They're saying that it is some momentum. They attributed a lot of momentum to the brand strength that Starbucks has right now. But in terms of the global picture, we're really to tell at this point, Brad. Yeah, no, that's a great question, especially when you think about how internationally known of a name Starbucks is. And I think going forward from here, what we're going to be looking at within these new stores prioritized is where in this omni-channel approach those stores sit. Because at the same time, if you think back to uh, this omni-channel approach and how they've grown out the delivery and, and ordering, they talked a lot about the rewards program and how that's grown out over the course of this past year, and especially in this quarter, the importance that rewards and the digital orders continue to take on. I think this was just about 40%, just a little bit shy of that, uh, of their total business. So all of that considered, um, it's going to be how they're driving that digital experience, even in different parts of the world here. You know, I'm already hyped up on my um, my s'mores frappuccino here. I'm going to take another sip in a hot second. But first, I'll give you my vibe check. And it was a two out of five. I was not so blown away by the puns that were given. Low hanging fruit to give coffee puns on a Starbucks or call. You got some of those. You got plenty of them. But at the end of the day, too, I think it was light on some of the future details that investors would have liked to hear to really retain confidence, even at a time where a uh, reformation is taking place or uh, a revival, if you will, within Starbucks. They've got to sell a growth narrative, which is, I guess, what they were trying to position here for investors. But it's going to be interesting to see if the street buys that, Shauna. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I do agree with you. I went with a three out of five, so not much better, but slightly better. And the reason why I gave it a three out of five was, one, it was a very strong quarter. Going into this earnings call, they had a lot to brag about. They had a lot to really tout. We did hear that on the call from the CFO and also the CEO. It was also Lockshan's first earnings call. I'm, I would assume, I would guess, it's pretty nerve-wracking experience. I thought he did a really good job just in terms of laying out exactly how he envisions Starbucks evolving over the coming quarters and then getting to that longer term investment strategy. I thought it was something that maybe the street took uh, took took as an encouraging sign at this point in terms of growing some of that future business. And also what they said about the new product launches. We spent so much time talking about the new olive oil drink, the Oleato, talking about the new pink drink, the paradise drink. And they were saying that it was gaining some traction. I tried the Oleato and Brad, I got to tell you much better than what I was expecting. 
you know, that prompted a big debate, Wall Street versus Main Street. And Main Street was trying to figure out, OK, uh, as much as the reformation strategy was a head scratcher to analysts, I think the the olive oil coffee was a big head scratcher to a lot of Main Street. Speaking of Wall Street versus Main Street, let's bring in Yahoo Finance's son, Brooke Palma, who is tracking the chatter here. Brooke, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, well, right now, shares of Starbucks down about 6%. We're seeing shares down 5.64% in after hours trading. Now, I did catch up with two Wall Street analysts, and one analyst, Sean Dunlop, who we caught up earlier today from Morningstar, said the market's reaction is interesting to wrestle with here. He said that, like you are saying, you know, it is possible that investors were expecting more. Uh, they did push uh, that guidance. They chose not to uh, rather change it, but they did reaffirm it. And so he mentioned that it could also reflect a quote unquote moderating operating margin expansion over the second half of the year. So something to look out for there. Peter Slay of BTIG said that shares are likely down because they reiterated that guidance rather than raise for the full year reflective. Maybe investors were looking for more here, but uh, Peter Slay emphasizing that this, this was a nice beat. Uh, halfway through the year, they're continuing to see these trends holding guidance the same, and they're not going to raise that guidance. And maybe some investors were expecting that. Now, moving right along, they did also weigh in on same source sales. Sean Dunlop saying that the balance comp in North America was great to see. Peter also weighing in that this was a nice beat, but we did see that compression in check size on a quarterly basis. He said that that could be explained by higher in-office traffic. Sean Dunlop said that. He said that maybe we're seeing fewer family checks in suburban stores, largely during the pandemic. We saw so many people bulk up their orders as they bought more coffee for their family. They also could suggest some trading down. Um, in addition to that, Sh Sean Dunlop did weigh in on that loyalty piece. We saw 57% of total spent despite changes to its reward system back in February, go through that loyalty rewards app. Now, Main Street largely trying to get used to this. We did see in April that there were some, I guess, bugs in the app that led people to take to social media saying that Starbucks added a free drink and then took it away. That led to some feistiness, some unhappiness among Starbucks consumers. Mm. But it seems like that reward system that had Main Street largely upset was able to be pushed through and in fact is, you know, boosting sales there. And another focus that these analysts are looking at is, of course, labor. Unionization efforts have been dwindling at Starbucks locations, but it cannot be ignored. It was something that was largely closely watched by Main Street and Wall Street in 2022, and that continued into 2023. Now, just to reemphasize the numbers, we saw barista turnover down 9%, but uh, market analyst Sean Dunlop said that he was fairly modest about that 9% from peak and average hours per worker up 4%. He said it sh that struck him as fairly modest, but Peter Slay also emphasizing that this is what we're seeing across the industry. Labor productivity increasing, retention is up, and nothing was mentioned about unionization efforts on the similar to previous quarters, but of course, Main Street watching Starbucks Workers United, they tweeted about two hours ago that they gave those proposals Starbucks about seven months ago, and that nothing has been done in terms of counter proposals. So Main Street and Wall Street largely tussling here. All right. A lot to remember going into tomorrow's trading activity from Brad Smith, Sean Smith, and Brooke De Palma. That's it here on Yahoo Finance. You've been tracking everything after the call for Starbucks here. We've got more coverage, 9 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. All right.